Okay, where to start? Okay, we have our image which we are going to use. That would be the appropriate one. All right, we have a clean lighting, nice environment. But before we start, there are few things, few ground rules we should know. So, all right, now, hence we are anyway doing our render passes. So, what I'll suggest is first let's make a list of all the render passes. Okay. required render passes all right and render render passes on scene requirement required render passes the compulsion one the one what you always need it anyway diffuse Specular reflection AO shadow simple mat. What I mean with the simple mat? Just a simple white mat or the black mat just to cut it off your CG objects to rest of the elements or the required object to the non required information all right so any simple mat okay now now render passes on scene requirement means what are the other extra passes you needed okay not uh, say dynamics pass fire smoke debris shadow any kind of a fog all right dynamic passes let's say fire smoke all right S haze h a s e or h a z e Haze, all right. Haze means uh, in normal uh, daylight when you see there's always some kind of a little dusty and little moisture into the air and it will create a, it's not a Z depth, but it will create a kind of a haziness to the depth. All right, haze. All right. And uh, Z depth. color mat it can be made it with the different primary colors RGBs if you need more you can include yellow any prominent color so you can pick that particular color and create a mat to that particular area okay what we did to your scenes Naki, right exactly the same we use color mat okay and uh, and five ambient what is ambient light all right the lights from the ambience from the environment what we are getting the light source which we of usually did with HDR all right and we might gonna keep adding as we progress we might feel that we require some of the other extra passes so we will break down those passes also Beauty is diffuse pass. It's the same. Beauty slash. Some people refer it as a beauty. Some people refer it as a diffuse pass. It's always I say it's the same pass. Okay, there's no difference on it. No difference. Okay, specular reflection AO. There are so many other passes also when you open your render settings. They are different. Direct light pass, indirect light pass, direct shadows, indirect shadows. There are so many other extra elements. Okay but as a primary element everything will work around with these elements until anything extra come along with all right so file let me save these passes list to our project and uh, render passes again render 
then the pass list all right let it be opened now where we're we gonna start let's study it our short that's image one which we are not gonna work on image two that's nice clean clear the framing it's good we can put a bench right here itself along with this or here depends all right let's study it let's study that short first colors very vibrant nice color very natural colors every kind of a colors are here okay light light source as I can see that it's a white sky means it's a pure white light all right and uh, the surface it's a grass it's a soft and we hardly see any of a direct shadows even with the objects closer to another they're not dropping any shadows one and another okay all what you can see even the roof also there's no straight line shadows okay what we can do is we can work into AOs but we still require the shadow pass but the shadow pass needs to be did you see this that is the closer part this is not AO AO would be these corners but did you see this is gra gradient of his shadows very soft shadows it's very soft shadows. so we will use mental ray shadows with the very soft attributes okay and uh, if I have to use this image to getting an ambient light, I will convert that image into HDR, which is actually not a very ideal way because that is already a JPEG image. So even if we convert into HDR, we are losing a data. It's we are already creating a HDR with the lost information, low resolution. All right, but still we'll get a bit of a idea. All right, that's the whole purpose of this exercise. So you will get an idea of okay. So these are the information we'll get now. Let's first, what we need to do is, let me convert that image into a proper match move. Let me get a proper right perspective. Okay, how are we gonna do that? Synthai, so let's open a Synthai. All of you guys know how to create a right pro appropriate perspective with a single image and with the moving shot. You guys are already quite experience now so uh, render again lawn yeah that's the one FPS doesn't matter because we are doing just with a single shot all right how we do with the single shot lens go to the lens here and I can see with this grid that the lines are quite straight of the building right if the lines were not straight means there is some kind of a lens distortion but I can feel that lines are quite straight here so there's no lens distortions right now so that that's each all right let's start with there are a few things what I can see that this line would be it's a porch uh, extended area for the house that's a main house so I can use this one parallel this one parallel this one parallel they all look parallel to me this one would be parallel to this one and you have these parallels also okay so we have a parallel line we have a parallel line for the y-axis also all right before I defining with the axis let's go to edit scene setting and check why up Maya it's good so we can continue now okay so all the attributes the axis would be followed according to the Maya adaptation add line you can take this one as a X axis or the Z axis up to you I'm taking this axis as my on X axis that would be my primary on Z axis drag put it exactly on the top of each other there won't be any confusion yes if there is any problem with your uh, video uh, okay let me tell you guys how ask me a very interesting question do we do lens correction so we had to do the lens correction if you guys want to work with the distorted one distorted image sequence all right 
So there are two ways. You correct the lens distortion, export it as the correct lens function with the straight lines. You can do it in Synthai. Okay, you can solve your lens distortion and re-export your image sequence. So it will correct your entire lens distortion and make it a clean plate for you. If you don't want to do it, you keep on your lens distortion function and do all the solving, all the match moving and transfer that data into the Maya and whatever you generate or whatever the cubes or 3 CD geometry you place, it will follow the same lens distortion. So there are both the ways you can do. But hence, my image have no lens distortion, so I don't have to worry it on. If they do, yes, of course, there's a lens distortion function. You can calculate what kind of a lens distortion is there. Fix it up and uh, press P and output and export save sequence. So it will save your sequence as a new lens distorted one. All right, so let me type it zero. There's no lens distortion. Okay, as you can see, if I do the lens distortion, did you see my lines, they're also shifting. Did you see this line here? Okay, it shifts. All right. Because And why it shifts? Because these lines are actually into the lens function. All the coordinates are connected to the lens itself. So it will calculate. No, 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 just for first time. Just the first time, of course. Only for the first time. All right. So my X, my Z, let me bring my more Z's. Uh, Parallel to Z. Parallel to Z. Parallel to X. Parallel to X. We have a good amount of X actually. Parallel to X. Okay, quite enough. Let's work into the Y's. On Y axis, take this line because all these lines are straight and I will put there. As you can see, it has the same distance along it. It means it's straight. All right. It's corrected. Parallel to Y and again parallel to Y. I'm not sure whether this cylinder is tapered or not, so I'm not taking that. I'm putting all the nearby areas and defining them as a parallel. Parallel to Y. I think that's enough. Let me align and here we go. We can see there's a good nice alignment. Check into your perspective. Lock to current cam and that's my ground. All right. Now this area becomes my ground. All right. But I don't want that to be ground. I want this to be ground. So once you get the right perspective, all what you have to do is shift your ground down. All right. There's a few techniques what you can use because not necessary that every time on the same ground level you get all the right coordinates. Um, 
Now this time the key get the pressure, huh? All right. So what I can do is, uh, I go to the geometry and as a whole unit and there we go okay as I can see yes this nicely aligned that would be our ground okay so let's check card perspective let me create a box we are getting a good nice perspective of it okay as you can see these lines and these coordinates are exactly perfectly aligning with it how I can check I will move my cube to this corner okay it's just a checking process okay cube to this corner which is the same one I'll drag see it follow exactly the same okay it means we get a good nice perspective all right that's my ground file uh, let me save the scene into a render passes file export as my ASCII uh, Render pass, I'll, I'll name it as underscore mm01. Alright, when we start with the comping, we'll start with comp01, comp02, comp03. Naming convention, I always say is always. It's in a different folder. Ayala. there we go okay close it I don't want to save it's already saved all right so we get our data okay let me minimize this list we are gonna start working on okay now Naki your turn all right now we start placing the objects where's our object anyway uh, let me transfer it here uh, would find which one copy okay and uh, after that what I gonna do is first let's open our Maya file um, and set our project there we go okay that's all what we have here file set project and Sharma set create default workspace when I click create default workspace means workspace will be created all right so everything I do create polygonal 
cube render save image yes it will automatically create it all right fine that's good all right now let's file oh, save scene as I'll say comp one file import and uh, as such mtx obj let's import that awesome it's huge let me open my outliner control g i will name it as my assets group scale it to it's nice simple clean clear not so complex simple object make it to 0 0.1 0 0.01 no 0 0.05 that would be the position okay all right Nicely, cleanly placed. Okay. Now, open its cyber shade. <coughs> so I don't know how exactly these textures will unwrap or work. Let me check. Okay, it's nicely unwrapped. It means the material should be nicely placed. Okay, right now I'm just making a simple shader just to check the textures. So I'll say uh, test shader. Why is this test shader? Because that shader, just for the checking purpose, because we're going to create a different shaders according to our render process I always turn it off the quadratic filter type why the reason I told you guys before also earlier also because this would be a two time it will do the filtration it will polish the pixels so you will uh, miss the crispiness of your textures okay I will give you the demonstration also how exactly will it happens so render pass again assets maps diffuse and bump awesome so they have the diffuse open and enter the bump channel let me first see what kind of a bump they actually have whether it's a normal base or the black and white base so if it would be normal I have to change my bump to the tangent space normal if it would be black and white Let's keep it to the simple black and white bump. It 
simple black and white okay so there's nothing to be changed here I'll just simply assign it the way it is simple bump turn it off and bump map all right turn it off all the qualities all right and every time just to avoid any confusion always lock this camera lock selected so we don't make any mistake so I'll go here okay and I'll just do a little test render just to demonstrate to you guys what exactly that filtration means aha extreme bump too high uh, let's try it with our mental ray also window setting preferences plugin manager Oh, ho. extreme slow. Why? Okay, so the first thing what you had to do is adjusting the bump values. Okay, adjust the bump values. Okay, now bump depth, I'll say point two. Okay, it's controlling. We still need to work more. Point zero five. That's coming out better, but still needs to reduce it. Still, it's looking too much. Okay. It's not at all look like it's polished. Okay, but yes, the example what I'm going to show you guys is that's the real resolution. What resolution this one have? It takes the resolution according to the size of our image. Okay, when you press one, okay, let's take this piece and let it be rendered. That's why it is taking too much time. Okay. Click. That's the original one. Did you see that? Okay. Now let me show you what exactly happened. If I open here, let me save this and filtration type, make it to quadratic and re-render it Did you see the difference of the pixels? Watch it carefully here. Okay, let's see. Come into this monitor. See very carefully this area. Okay, very carefully see it. 
क्रिस्पी ब्लेंडेड क्रिस्पी ब्लेंडेड क्रिस्पी ब्लेंड क्रिस्पी ब्लेंड ओके सो इट्स ट्राई टू पॉलिश योर पिक्सल्स ओके आई डोंट वांट इट व्हाई बिकॉज इफ आई हैव टू ब्लर इट आई विल डू एवरीथिंग इनटू द कॉम्पिंग ओके सो व्हाट आई वांट हियर इज because what exactly the mental ray do it into the render settings see when i open my render setting globals it already have filter okay it already have that so why i do i have to filter it twice it's already have a filter here so what happens if i turn it on there it is filtering two times so two times it is polishing your pixels okay all right so that's why i was telling you guys all right so make it to turn off let's again come back to our camera and i want to see the final result the placement with the image how exactly will it coming out Okay. 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 All right. In this situation, why I actually want to take this test render? Just want to see whether perspective everything is looking right or not. If it is right, we'll bring it up to the top. That's okay. We'll put it our bench center in a lounge also. No problem. Okay. Okay so the perspective wise I'm quite satisfied I'm quite happy that the placement is there Okay Okay yeah so let's bring that chair like how says let's bring it up let's bring it up more close okay so it would be easily visible we'll do it here itself okay uh <coughs> saved it I'll create a folder for final renders. I will save all my renders inside it. Okay. Now in this stage, we checked everything. It's nicely placed. We applied our default shader and textures. It's there. Now the next step would be take this image and in a Photoshop, we'll convert into the HDR, which is again I'm telling you it's a wrong way because we are converting JPEG to HDR. If you have a different exposure of five or seven images, yes. you can convert into the hdr combine all the exposure into the one hdr it's better but right now it is just to demonstrate to you guys okay so it's not a again not a very ideal way have we convert any image to hdr guys hmm save as if i save this it won't appear here we convert into the bimp bmp tiff or any other png but not in hdr why how could we export it that's what i'm saying okay not save is let's say export it file is there any export export okay no guys come on come on come on come on come on guys true sunny is true it's a 8 bit image jpeg is a 8 bit image 
Yeah, so we need to convert into 32. So what we have to do, image mode, change it to 32 bit. When we convert into 32 bit, when you do save as, now you can save it to Radiant HDR. Save it. too long name already so once we saved as you know we get our slider you see that's the problem okay the quality difference I'm talking about when I increase my exposure my light supposed to come from the sky but it is a 8-bit image it's not having that much data and color information it emitting a light from house as well as the sky both together even the house is also emitting a light all right so these are the few elements you know why you never have to do it but we still get the little bit of a color information by using it so that's okay